Thomas, we're back, my friend. We're back with our rising star. Good morning, Rob. How are you? Good morning, guys. I'm well. It's nice having you in the studio. <coughs> it's good to um, good to have you in Chicago. You're in from Salt Lake. Park City, but Park Salt City. Lake Salt Lake's Close the airport enough. and Park City is where we where we go hide in the mountains. Beautiful. And um, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, before we get into a little bit about your history and stuff, I said to you, I go, what qualifies you as a rising star? Because, and we've Fair known question. each other, you know, a little bit over the years. We've talked mm -hmm. plenty and stuff like that. I said, what qualifies you as a rising star? And you said what? I think the amount of junk that I threw away <laughs> and performed consistently across from October 2011 when I walked into this studio to say, hey, what's going on? What's Tasty Trade? Uh, we've had one down month, uh, slight drawdown in this February. We, we drew down the accounts, a uh, very nominal percentage, uh, nominal amount of money. Uh, I had pneumonia, and I was really, I had pneumonia and was very ill. And so I uh, kind of turned my back on a couple things, and we had a little bit go against us, didn't trade much at all. And... Um, but it's been very consistent in terms of uh, proving concept. So the first trade you made, um, and I'm not going to give the story yet. We'll get to it in a second. Uh, the first trade you ever did in options, it was 1987. How old were you? Well, 1987, I would have ago. been, uh, I was in my late 20s. Um, so late 20s, you make your first trade. It was an OEX trade. That's correct. And I, I we, we were long some stock, and I came out of a buy-and-hold environment. So I had a general nervousness about being long stock and seeing what I saw. My sense of the market was that we were going to go down. And that was in August of, uh, of 1987. 1987, and I called my broker up. Uh, Gordon Schubert and said, Gordon, what do I do? I don't, I don't like the market. I think it's going to go down. And he said, well, you could buy OEX puts. And I said, what's a put? And anyway, he did a short explanation, which confused me to no end because it was just a definition. And, uh, I said, well, let's do that. I want to do that. And I spent $2,000. Sounds like a good idea at the time, right? Yeah, spent $2,000 on a two lot of November OEX puts in You were nervous about the market, but you were a fighter pilot at the time. I was I was a T-38 instructor pilot, which was a fighter type airplane. But uh, in respect to all my fighter pilot friends, okay. uh, we know it was a, in an, it was an. Oh, we got is it. Is that the bad boy? That's, <laughs> that's, that's the plane. And, to us, uh, that makes you a fighter pilot, okay? We don't have to <laughs> yeah, worry about the specifics. Right. You don't have to qualify. Well, the, the, the T-38. It is the F is the t trainer version of the F five. I fly jets. So anyway, <laughs> you could see there were room for two people in it, and uh, that's what I did. I you're like top guys to fly. You're like Top Gun. So, but so you're not nervous about that, okay? But you're nervous about <laughs> no, I had, two lot of the X puts. <laughs> well, you have to be comfortable doing the the, the, the T thirty eight flying the instructor. You there was a great r level of confidence. I sure. wasn't. I was no short. I was not short on ego. Uh, but uh, we were also skilled at what we did, and we were highly selected to become instructor pilots. And um, so, so you buy a two lot of puts in the OEX. It's it's August or it's after August. You got nervous in August, sometime after August, 1987. Tony probably sold them to you. I think he remembers the trade. Um, and do you remember what price you paid for them? I remember the aggregate amount was two thousand uh, so dollars. You paid a thousand dollars. You paid ten dollars each for them. Right. right. Okay. So. Fast forward the the, the uh, you know the P and L and keep in mind there were no computers there was no platform right. there was no internet to track this on but I could look up in the Wall Street Journal what how they were going and they were going kind of my way because the market was rolling over mm -hmm. uh, slightly and as we approached uh, October of 1987 I was able to get permission to take a T38 uh, with another instructor on our we would go on proficiency missions to. Uh, do our own approaches with one another rather than be with student pilots. It was really kind of a boondoggle, but yeah. uh, at least if, for the guys, you know, some pilots do care where they go when right. they're on their layovers, and we did, and we went into Glenview. And Glenview Naval Air Station is right in Tony's back door. Yep, he lives in Glenview. That's correct. Pretty close. Mm -hmm. And if truth be told, the base is no longer there, but back in 1987, Glenview Naval Air Station, we got permission to go in. And that was on, uh, I came in on Thursday evening, the 15th of October. And then I went down to see friends because I grew up in the North Shore of Chicago, uh, up in Wilmette. And my lovely wife, Ellen's from Winnetka. And we were new Trier graduates. And we, I was just with my buddy, obviously, that time. And we went down to the Merck, 
the Board of Trade and then Chicago Board of Options books. Exchange. <laughs> well, I saw that the market I just was— like when you got bit by the bug in 1987. That was it. I, the yeah. market was weak. I was up a ton of money. I, there I was on the exchange. I was within you know earshot of the pit for the OEX. <laughs> And I said, how do I get out of this thing? This has got to be worth a bundle. Do you remember seeing us in there? <laughs> I, oh, of course, yes. <laughs> of course, yeah. a little younger then. Yes. We, so it's 1987, <laughs> it's getting to October expiration, and you decide to puke out your puts, and you made some decent money. That day I'd gone from, you know, that day we went up to 10000 in value. I called my broker back in Phoenix from the from the exchange, and we got out of the puts. And it was a, so it was a 500% gain on my first options trade, and I was long puts and did everything different than we do now. And you got out the day before the crash. I got out the day before the crash. You got out the Friday of expiration, which was that 100-point down day. Mm -hmm. I love the story because it brings back such memories. I remember trading that pit that day and all that crazy stuff, and then Monday you must have been – I wouldn't want to be flying with them on Monday. No. <laughs> well, and, and, and there, there was a moment to celebrate because, of course, Friday I, I felt very I felt very flush. And uh, I of made course. probably 25 or 30 percent of my annual salary in the of military. Course, course, yeah. And uh, I was in Chicago with friends and we had a great time. Best uh, night of your life. That, that, it was the best night of my life. We took off from uh, Glenview Naval Air Station on Sunday and I had friends down on Willow Road at the uh, end of the runway and they were watching me take off. And, and you uh, bust them. <laughs> we, 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 we kept our speed, we kept our elevation low so that we could get as much smash as possible mm -hmm. and then crisply pulled up above them uh, to depart Glenview Naval Air Station going about 300 knots. <laughs> cool. So let's fast forward. You you got bitten by the bug in 1987. After that, you became a commercial pilot, and you're still you're still investing. I wouldn't I wouldn't say trading at that point. You're still investing, um, and you're you're a true kind of a classic retail trader, engaged but not not really successful. Well, I was trying to be a buy and hold investor, and uh, that was what I grew up with. Mm -hmm. However. I, even without a lot of uh, data points like we have now with the platform, I was just parentally nervous about some of the positions, and I try. I always was looking to hedge them, but uh, unfortunately, as I went through time, I decided that even though my first trade had come from no platform, no technical analysis, certainly no uh, blog, uh, really sure. just nothing. Uh, I decided that I had to go in search of what I call, and everybody calls the Holy Grail. <laughs> so I was, I went into years of looking at black box systems and software that uh, uh, could could create a, the buy and sell signal. And the pursuit of the buy and sell, sell signal, and the ultimate trading machine, blah blah blah, was was very was very tough because it, it wore my it wore me out. I, I by the time I got comfortable with something i w not to mention it was expensive it was expensive yeah <laughs> so let's fast forward now so we have enough time to talk about um kind of what you're doing now i'm going to fast forward all the way through to uh 20 some odd years later uh, 24 years later or something you make uh or 23 years later you make the pilgrimage back to chicago and you stumbled into tasty trade and i'm i'm just curious what brought you here that day um I did go to see who was going to play Scott Sheridan, who who'd always been very. You you both had been wonderful to me over the years at Think or Swim, and I've been to advanced training seminars mm -hmm. sponsored by the two of you and the rest of your group. Uh, I really came to see that the TD Ameritrade was going to be like the Think or Swim, and I knew there'd be some changes, but I wanted to meet Scott's replacement, okay. uh, Nick, and uh, just kind of go visit my money. See if it was going to likely still be there. Uh, oh, it's safe <laughs> down the road. <laughs> so, and then you stumbled over here. You found us. I said, "Well, what's Tom doing?" He says, "Oh, he's over at Tasty Trade." And I had plenty of time. It was close by. I walked over and I walked right into this studio uh, when the show was over. And the shows were only a couple hours at that point mm -hmm. of programming. And uh, said hello and said, "What's well? What's Tasty Trade?" And and I started watching the show consistently. And I had this epiphany that was almost instantaneous that I had to throw away almost everything that I did. So the, uh, you know, the, the blogs, the software, the, the just ridiculous reliance on things outside of myself and start going back to what was there for me back in 1987 when I just had a, a, a kind of a sense that the market was weak. And of it's so it's a little less than two years ago, and you, you all of a sudden you obviously were able to embrace this 
pretty quickly, and you traded in a portfolio margin accounts, so multiple portfolio margin accounts, and you, um, what was the most important change to your trading um, methodology, to your trading mechanics? Like, what were the game changing differentiators for you, uh, um, trading wise? Well, I, I, I quickly gravitated. Uh, I did get the portfolio margin after the point that I came to visit you when you were speaking of it on the show, and I came to understand that and qualified our accounts for portfolio margin. And uh, I started t trading naked options almost from the get-go. Volatility was better when I started Much back, better, back right. in those days. And trading naked options, uh, I, I believe I understood it pretty quickly. And uh, that that was made, made a big difference. Uh, traded Apple a lot. Still to this day, trade Apple a lot. I, I think that Apple's great. I'm I'm glad my accounts haven't risen to the point of Karen's where we're trading in that kind of size, scaling to her size. In yeah. yeah. uh, Apple would be difficult, even with as liquid as it is. But we we love trading Apple. We trade Amazon, uh, Google. When you say we, we is your family. We is you and your. Your kids, really. We're the real world version of the trader family with uh, <laughs> about to have the. Uh, That's the, weird. <laughs> your, your daughter's 25. She's about, she's 25. Almost and, the same uh, as my daughter. And, right? my, and my future son in law, Chris, is, is I believe, 27. But that's about right. And my son, Bradley, is 28. And he uh, is a pilot for SkyWest. And he's he likes to trade, but he's not in with us every day on Skype mm -hmm. doing the Skype sessions. Um, but we really – we use this program, the Tasty Trade program, for a lot. Uh, I also, because I've taught all my life, try to use language with them that isn't confusing. Like uh, we do. We use language that's confusing to people because uh, that's what we try to do here. Just, We don't teach. Just be lucky your kids weren't raised in Brooklyn. You'll be fine. <laughs> okay. But we do try to keep it simple, um, and uh, they understand – what happens at expiration if we're short a put and we were to not do something sure. about it that week? They may not be able to give you the classic definition of a put, but they sure as heck know what happens at expiration. So we deal with it purely from a practical matter, keeping it as simple as possible. And they're doing great. Jackie uh, is trading her IRA now pretty much without my help, and that was a big step that we started when Case uh, – came on with you and and I just said that's it Jackie it's time to for you to start so, doing this so let's so one drawdown since October 2011 is obviously amazing because it's better than we've done drawdown wise um, mm -hmm. we're probably a little more aggressive on as far as use of our capital things like that um, but the impressive thing is you're trading fairly obviously for portfolio margin accounts there there's substantial accounts and and the results speak for themselves I I think you um, if I was to talk to you about specific strategies. Like what would you say, you know, other than just saying I like some naked stuff, what would be like a go-to strategy for you? Well, a lot of it has to do with what we see in the in the trend for the the uh, exact underlying, but we if we see a a stock that is had a nice we like to see movement and we sure. and we see a decent crisp movement that occurs quickly, it gets on our radar screen very quickly and we're more and more using just the quotes tab on the market watch and sorting to find yeah. that because I've learned quickly that the the quicker I get to the confirm and send, the better my trades are. The more time I spend on analysis, the, the less I just talk myself out of it or, or I'm late. And sometimes being late is, is cost you dimes, nickels, and quarters. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So um, we, we love to do the ratios, spreads. Uh, we've done the jade lizards and had great success uh, on that three, four, five times. What's been your worst trade as of recent, you know, over the last like three, six months? What's been the trade that hasn't really worked? The absolute worst trade of my life. Yes. My wife was watching Liz and Jenny. She got into the show. I said, well, honey, I think you should trade a little bit. She was a runner on the CME. Oh, really? So she, okay. she'd been around traders, but this was much more uh, This was much more appealing to her to sit around with Liz and Jenny and trade. Mm -hmm. So we decided to trade Walmart. And we thought our, our, our thought was is that Walmart uh, should go down. Okay. And Walmart, we did a calendar on Walmart, and it was a small lot calendar. And the calendar, the, the underlying 
or just walked away yeah. from the sweet spot of the calendar. Yeah. And I don't know that the trade was ever profitable. So the, over the course of with, with a roll, turning it into a diagonal, we just it never could come in. Yeah. And we lost $40. And it was the most painful $40. <laughs> I wish I could have just taken Cause, a hurdle. Because when you said worst trade and uh -huh. you said Walmart, I'm like, uh -huh. okay, what could really happen there? Then you went calendar spread. I'm thinking, well, you should be fine there. Now I get your point. Yeah. But but the, for the sake of uh, for the sake of everybody who's listening, I mean, you know, I think Walmart's tradable, but it's it doesn't have the volatility that's going to allow you to do what I did in Netflix last week, which was to turn a, a trade that was down substantially. I was short the 205 calls mm -hmm. in the uh, position that I was in and uh, was able to recoup that, all that, and make a gain on it in three days. That's amazing because I did the same thing, which we're going to talk about in anatomy of a trade. But that is really, the, to me, that's the turning point for um, individual investors like you, do-it-yourself investors, is when you can make a bad trade and rather than puke out the trade, turn it into a winner within a couple of days, weeks, whatever it is. Well, the funniest story about that, too, is is, uh, is I did have the time. I'm, I'm building a home, but I had kind of the week off, uh, things had slowed down. And when the trade went against me, it reminded me of the Amazon trade where I did the same thing happen except with a strangle, but it was had the same difference. I was way – I was really – my short strike was way below where the market was. So that took me three months to repair and become positive on the Amazon trade. And I, I called in last year and said, hey, this is great. You know, if you stick with these things, uh, especially when you've got, uh, you know, undetermined risk, uh, things can work out if you just have that warrior attitude. Did, did you ever think you would reach a point that you could be a full-time uh, sustainable trader? Well, and that is the key word is sustainable. Yeah. I mean, we all we all have to uh, do our gut checks to see if this is sustainable. I'm sure there's a few folks with a up 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 market that doesn't seem oh, want to God, quit yeah. who sure. like to be short deltas in general and long sure. theta. Everybody's going through that. To be flat or slightly up on the year, I think, is a, a victory. But even if you're down, it doesn't mean that you stop or give up because I've studied a lot of done a lot of the cycle analysis and. You know this thing will give give back, and it'll give back handily, and, and it should be sooner than later. But we'll not hold our breath. Um, when when you look forward, and I know we're talking about uh, you know thirteen percent implied volatility right now, but do you see any reason that you, Rob, you should like, like I look at you as somebody that's that has all the mechanics and all the skills to not only you know to be this is your this is your profession. And I don't see, do you see a time looking forward where where you're not doing this? Like what I mean by that is you've reached a level now where you're effectively a professional trader. That's what you do. And there's nobody there's nobody that understands more than you do about, it, there's a few little pieces to it. Okay, great. But as far as number of executions, your ability to, to be, to, to make a living, to be consistent, consistency is, is really the key here. And I think you've, on that. Yeah, I think it's ownership too. You have to take ownership of this utterly and completely. There can't be a tendency to want to go listen to what the analyst says on CNBC ever. Uh, if, if you can't see it in what you're doing, uh, th you're never going to get it from somebody else. It's got to be yours. And that's the thing that makes me think that this is sustainable because it's fun. And I think if it's not fun, who's going to stick with it? Uh, if it's not fun, I'm doing it with my kids. That makes it extraordinarily fun. I feel like I'm part of, uh, the tasty trade movement and, and success. Yeah. Uh, and that makes it really enjoyable. I'm engaged in no small part because of those two factors, tasty trade and my children. And you understand that your daughter, especially your daughter, because she's been, she's most committed, she's going to be doing this for forever. Like there's never going to be a time in her life when she's going to be um, informationally dependent on anybody else. You know, it's very powerful. It is powerful. It's it's, it's powerful and empowering. And uh, it's, it, I think that the independence that she already shows, uh, the kind of the poker mentality of my future son-in-law, Chris, um, the I'll, I'm going to trade it because I don't mind being long. Silver's attitude of my son uh, is just is, is fantastic, and and to the extent that we can make it, the the confirm and send the trading come quicker and quicker to all of us uh, through less analysis and more common sense of strategy and understanding of implied volatility. The better off it'll be because because teaching people. I, if I had tried to teach anybody what I knew, it would have taken a decade, and then they would have had exactly what I had, which was nothing.
Um, so it's it's just it's got to be fun, and it is fun. It it's 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 going to be really fun in the future because we're not always going to be in an up. Market. You mean we might get into a cyclical market at some point so we can all have a lot of fun. Rob, this has been awesome, man. I'm so excited. I'm so happy for for you and it's also so exciting for everybody to hear your story because it's, you know, you've you've if there's ever been anybody that paid their dues, you've paid your dues. Yeah, and 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 you're such a process driven person that that it's really a, a great story and I, I mean, listen, we're hoping you you knock them out of the park from here on out, so right? Mm -hmm. Forever. It's, Why it's, shouldn't it's, you? It's, once the house is done, uh, the scaling hopefully will be a little bit easier. With I assume that when the house is done, that implied volatility will go up, just because I would prefer it that way. <laughs> um, but no, we're 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 just going to keep at this and uh, be a part of the whole uh, the whole effort. Uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. So this is our rising star, Rob. He's been um, the last two years has been. A real game changer for him, and it's just it's it's so cool to hear it. Absolutely, thanks so much. Hey, for one quick out. shout out to my mom. Uh, she's ninety, going to be ninety two on the day of the wedding in September, and she calls it tasty freeze. We'll take it. <laughs> All right, we'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> shout out to your mom. I like it. So the ninety one is now the leader in the clubhouse. Ninety one is yeah. a new fifty. If, if they've got any ninety two or ninety three year olds out there, more power to you. Uh, Absolutely, that's great. awesome. That thanks, means Rob. you're going to be trading for a long time too. That's absolutely. I'm going at least till 92. <laughs> we'll be back in 90 seconds without bootstrappers. Listen to Get Tasted, only on the Tasty Trade Network.